I have some more news for you for August the 24th, 2012, and I'm going to be giving you a little bit more information about the coming war, the Psalm 83 war. The news that I got in after I made my first video that you'll see right here. So my second video will be placed at the bottom of this so that you can see all of the information contained in one site here. But before I get into that prophecy about the Psalm 83 war, I want to get into another one. Uh, this prophecy, many of you who've been at my site know that I've been providing you with detailed information about the famines, the droughts, the lack of water, intense heat, and how this, these circumstances are causing food prices to skyrocket like we've never seen before. And all of these warnings I'm taking straight out of the Bible. I'm telling you what to expect because I know that the Lord's word never fails. And you'll know and you will see the things that I'm pointing to from the Bible are coming to pass. Everything. Because as I said, the Lord is the only one who's ever, ever been able to do something like this. Provide us information thousands of years before it even took place. But here in Revelation 16, 8, we are, we're privy to some of the information of what it's going to look like during the tribulation if you're left behind. And the Lord says, the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 16, it says, never again will they hunger. So that means that the people who were in the tribulation, they were hungry. Never again will they thirst. Obviously, the water is going to shrink up because of the intense heat, the scorching of the sun, as it tells us, and other places in the Bible. And so people are going to be thirsty. And the sun will not beat on them, nor any scorching heat, as I just mentioned, scorching heat. And so what I wanted to point out, one of the articles that just came up, it says the U.S. drought has gotten so bad you can see it from space. Now I'm going to go to my site so that you can get a good glimpse of what the Lord is showing us through his current events. I mean, obviously, if the Lord said, keep on the watch, keep on the watch, and you're watching, that means if you know what to watch for, you're going to see the very things that he asked you to watch for, and here they are. There's one of them, the drought, massive droughts that are taking place. Now, what you're seeing here is the Mississippi River. It's a picture of how it, it flows like this, and you'll, you'll have a chance to look at it more closely, but here's one of the levees there. And so let's see what it says. It says, last year the Mississippi River flooded. Major storms combined with melting snow brought the waterway more than 56 feet above, above the river stage in May. And the Army Corps of Engineers lifted the floodgates of the Morganza spillway deliberately inundating some 3,000 square miles of rural, rural Louisiana to spare worse damage in New Orleans and Baton Rouge. In August of last year, the NASA's Landstat 5 satellite took a picture of the swollen river above. And this is the one that I was just showing you here. You can see how massive it is. Now, this year is an entirely different story. Before I even go on at, before this, just know this, that the Lord told us in Luke 21, uh, 25, that you are going to see massive storms. How do we know this? Because it says you'll see the raging of the, the uh, waves and uh, water. So we know the winds are going to be pushing the, the waves. It's going to be causing these huge waves. And what pushes waves? Storms. And so that's exactly what we've been seeing. That's what happened last year. And this year it's a flip. And now we're into this massive drought. It says, this year is an entirely different story. At the end of last month, more than 60% of the lower 48 states were in drought. And the mighty Mississippi was running low. An 11-mile stretch of the river has been closed closed and uh, on and off since August 11th. And earlier this week, nearly 100 boats lined up near the, the uh, Greensville, Mississippi, waiting to pass. And water levels near 
Memphis are ranging from 2.4 to 8.3 below the river stage compared with 11.7 uh, feet above at this time last year. It's quite a difference. To make matters worse, the floods of last year deposited huge amount of sediment on the riverbed, uh, reconfiguring the existing canal. So because of the storms of last year, now we're facing these complex problems that arise from the flooding. And Christ D Jesus told us in Luke 21, 25, uh, we would face complex problems because of the ragings of the, the tides and the waters. So that's just another part of the prophecies coming to pass. So now again it says the NASA was there to to capture the view from space, this time with the Landstat 7 below. So check this out. This is what it looks like. You'll see comparatively the, the, the difference of what's taking place. Of course, you could spend more time when you get it from my site and just go click the link. Officials from the Army Corps and Engineers say that the low water levels and attaining barge traffic jams, closed ports, and closed river sections will continue until October. And of course, this is going to mess up the economy a lot too because you have ships on there that transport goods. So there's all kinds of complex problems. Now, the direct costs are staggering. NASA explains that a loss of just one inch of draft can require a ship to run 17 tons less cargo. And there you go. That's what I'm talking about, the economy, the economics, economics of the situation. The major drought in 1988, one that set the record for water levels at minus 10.7 feet, brought an estimate of $1 billion in losses to the barge industry that year. Of course, the indirect cost, the most revenue to the post along the way to the businesses whose shipments are delayed. Not to maintain the toll of the ecosystems that depend on water from, from the river, those costs are much, much greater. And so you see the, I mean, I'm showing you daily now events that the Lord said that you were going to see. Now, you won't find anywhere. Please don't email me and say, Frank, can you show me where it says in the Bible that Mississippi River is going to uh, become shallow? It doesn't say that. What it says is you're going to have intense heat, major, you're going to have droughts, you're going to have famines. And so we know by these conditions that you have a reaction to the intense heat, and this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the droughts, we're seeing the lack of water and the shrinking of the uh, the rivers. It's causing economic problems for many, many people along the Mississippi River, one of the longest rivers around. So let me go back to my site now and we'll continue on. Let me show you some other news that came out today. And this again, now we're going to go back to the Psalm 83 war. And keep in mind the Psalm 83 war, these are the nations that are going to be attacking Israel in the last days. Let me just scroll down there. Excuse me for scrolling down. But this is a new article that it didn't appear in my first video. The headline reads, The Syrian envoy will destroy Israeli nuclear facilities with 20 missiles. Now, speaking, speaking during the meeting of the Jordanian-Syrian delegation. Now, both of these nations are mentioned in Psalm 83, so don't get surprised that they're mentioned together. The Jordanian-Syrian delegation at the embassy in Amen, Syria's ambassador to Jordan, uh, Bajat Suleiman, said that Syria is capable of destroying Israel's nuclear facilities with 20 missiles should Syria be attacked. Now here you go, you got the wars and rumors of wars, that's part of this prophecy as well, you're seeing that in this article. It says, in spite of many casualties, Syria would incur over such a move, the Jordanian media reported Thursday. The delegation arrived at the embassy in order to wish the ambassador and his country a happy Ed El Fitr holiday to, uh, and uh, express support for the Bashar al-Assad regime. What the Zionists have 
nuclear weapons wise could cause a major now get this this is important cause us major casualties should they attack Syria in contrast we could cause massive losses to their nuclear facilities and we would we wouldn't need more than 20 missiles the ambassador told the delegation so here we go the rhetoric the tension is mounting between these nations and they are the exact nations that are listed in the Psalm 83 war now here's another one we're talking about wars and rumors of wars headline the headline news here for yesterday was that the US sends aircraft carrier back to back to the Gulf to face Iran in Syria now if you want to Google my name, put put this down. Frank Demora warns Syria will attack Israel if outside forces attack Syria. And this is one of the scenarios that I believe that is very, very possible that if either the United States or Israel attacks Iran, that Syria will launch a massive attack against the Israelis and that could start the Psalm 83 war. But you have the aircraft going into the area of where we see these wars breaking out. So I'll let you read this uh, by yourself. The article's a lot longer, but I'm giving you the link right there so you can go and read it for yourself. But here's another one that just came out. It says, the headline, Israel attack on Iran runs risk of massive missile retaliation now this is you'll see the names in different colors and I'll show you why let me read it first if Israel tax around the Israeli heartland could face retaliation from more than 10,000 missiles based in Iran Syria here we go this is the first one Syria is in the Psalm 83 war Lebanon they are mentioned in the Psalm 83 war Gaza Strip the Palestinians, they're mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. And according to Ruz Rubin, the founder of the first and uh, first director of Israel's missile defense organization, Rubin speaking Thursday, August 16th, before the Middle East Studies Department of the U.S. Marine Corps University in Quantico, Virginia, said that it was uh, above his pay grade to say whether or not it would be wise for Israel to strike Iranian nuclear facilities. However, in a detailed presentation of the threat Israel faces and in an interview afterwards with El uh, Monitor, Rubin made his reservations about the repercussions of such an attack clear. Israel's strategic circumstances have changed dramatically in the last two or three decades, Rubin said from a time when the main threat came from other uh, other nation states tanks and airplanes Recogni recognizing that they could not compete with Israel in these areas he said governments in Iran and Syria and the non-state of here you go you see the colored air they're mentioned in Psalm 83 and so are the Hamas so you have actors the Hezbollah and the Hamas have em emphasized indirect fire from standoff weapons rockets and missiles of ever increasing range power and accuracy now, I don't know how many articles I would have to post where it shows you every single one of these nations that God has outlined they are getting ready to attack Israel so please pay attention to what the Lord is given to you and you're going to have again to make the decision whether what you're seeing is actually from God or it's just a coincidence and I really feel sorry for you if you think it's a coincidence because you cannot put these many articles together with the identical people that are listed in the prophecy uh, and then write it off. But if you can delay it if you want to, but sooner than you think, you're going to see on the news this war take place and every one of those nations that I just read about will be involved in that war. Welcome everyone, Frank Demore here with the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, and I'd like you 
invite you to go to my prophecy site. You see it right here, and you can get all the latest news connecting Bible prophecy with current events. Now, as you see here, I labeled this message, the message for the future is now. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the things that I showed you about, what I warned you about earlier in the year and in the latter part of 2011 concerning the nation of Egypt and exactly what was going to transpire in that nation. And as you see by the end of this YouTube video, uh, all the warnings have come to pass. So first of all, let's look at what the Lord tells us in His Word. That's uh, most important. And uh, so let's go right to it. Isaiah chapter 19. This is a prophecy uh, that talks about Egypt. All right? Keep that in mind. It says, the burden of the Egypt. It's, it's a no-brainer, right? There it is. I'm talking about Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of the Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And that started in the latter part of 2011. And they shall fight everyone against his brother. And you all saw that on the news. It was on the news for quite a while, why the uprisings were going on. And everyone against his brother city against city and kingdom against kingdom and of course when you read the rest of uh, Isaiah there you'll see that Egypt was going to be given over to a cruel leader and that we're looking at right now as well as you're going to see but for those of you who are new at my site I just wanted to tell you that the Psalm 83 war of which Egypt is going to be involved in all the names of those nations that will be attacking Israel in the Psalm 83 war are listed right here to the left and the present day name, the modern day names of those nations are to the right. And so you can see the Hagarenes right here in number four, Egypt. So Egypt is numbered with all these nations that will be coming against Israel in the last days. And of course, when you look at Psalm 83, you'll see that they, uh, these nations, they have come, said, let us cut cut them off from being a nation and they're talking about Israel that the name of Israel may not be uh, no more in remembrance and then the rest of this psalm in verse 5 it says and they have consulted together with one consent that they confederate against these so we know from what the Lord tells us that there's going to be a war this war will be against Israel and all of these people will be involved in that war against Israel and uh, that is coming up now in 2011 I began to tell you exactly what would happen in Egypt based on God's Word and today today's news is huge in Bible prophecy but before I get to today's news I want to show you that what I warned you concerning these events have now been played out so let me go back in December, first of all, December 14th of 2011, and I made it really simple so you can just click the link when you go to my site. But uh, in that prophecy I warn this, Psalm 83, we see Egypt, one of the nations that will attack Israel. And as I have warned you in the past, so I was already talking about this before this date right here, uh, and this is what I warned. Watch out for what the Muslim Brotherhood does in the near future because they will turn to strict, now pay attention to this, strict Muslim law to control their people and anyone else they can. Now, well, let me finish this and I'll explain it. If you plan to visit Egypt anytime soon, you better read this report. The Muslim Brotherhood, which won success in its first round of preliminary elections in Egypt last month is reportedly set on turning the country's holiday holiday resort sin free so the Muslim Brotherhood they even though in the beginning before this date of December 14 2011 the Muslim Brotherhood came out you can google this for yourself said that they were not going to have anybody in the Egyptian elections run for the Muslim Brotherhood of course before this date I told you that that was going to be a lie and that turned out to be the truth as well because Muslim Brotherhood did enter 
into the race and you're going to see the outcome of what I told you a little later on. So there you have it. I told you the Sharia law, the strict Muslim law is Sharia law. And uh, just keep in mind what I'm telling you here from the past because you're going to see how the future is already sprung on us. Now, in my December 20th of 2011 video below, I tell you the Muslim Brotherhood will win the elections and why. So I'm not going to play this whole thing for you. Uh, it isn't, it's not really that long. But please, if, if you will, just click on that and go to that video because you will see a lot of information how I talk about the peace process breaking down and how the Muslim Brotherhood is going to take over and all of that has come to pass. Now in my warning of January the uh, 2012, remember we were up here in 2011 and of course the preliminary elections were just being held for Egypt but I was telling the people who was going to win even before that poor. Uh, that portion of the time. So, again, in January, this is what I wrote. Psalm 83, we know Egypt will attack Israel in the near future with the other Arab nations that border Israel. I am keeping you posted as to who is winning the vote for Egypt's new election for their new government. Now, they were going again through the preliminary uh, elections. As I warned, the Muslim Brotherhood is still out in front, and uh, and now the last phase of the voting is taking place, and the word is the Muslim Brotherhood is still in the lead. Now, it didn't surprise me at all, for, and for those of you who have been with me all this time, you knew that it didn't surprise you either, because I already told you what was going to happen, and again, based on the word of the Lord. Why is this important? Because the Muslim Brotherhood is bent on getting rid of Israel. It only makes sense that the new government formed in Egypt in these last days would be the one that would to fit into the Psalm 83 war prophecy. And there's the date that I gave this and there's the link for you in red. Then again in January 2012 I wrote this. Paul makes it clear that at the time when you hear the call on peace and safety, that would be the time a sudden destruction will come. And Psalm 83 makes it very clear who is going to come against Israel in the last days. As I mentioned, Egypt is one of the nations that will try to destroy Israel. And if you know Egypt is one of the nations that will attack Israel, you should have understood that any peace agreement Please pay attention to this. Any peace agreement between Israel and Egypt will disappear. So let's take a look at what one Hezbollah official said. And then I ended it there. And there you can read the rest of the report by going there. Now I wanted to go, the reason I wanted to highlight about this, me warning you that the peace agreement is going away, you're going to see that. But let's go to the January 1st, 2012. Again, another post that I put up about these matters. The Muslim Brotherhood movement may bring, uh, bring the fate of Egypt's peace treaty to a referendum. Now, back in January, they had already started to talk about this peace process that was uh, formed be between Mahakan Begin of the Israel and then Anwar Sadat from Egypt and how Jimmy Carter got them together they signed a peace agreement between Egypt and Israel that was holding and I said it is gonna go away I told you it was gonna go away I made videos you can see those videos so let me finish here it says results from Egypt's recent parliamentary vote which saw considerable gains for Islamic fashions such as the mother bro the, the Muslims Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party and the radical Salafite movement Al Nor Party have caused some to question the future of Israel's 1979 peace treaty with its neighbor to the south. And of course, if you know what Paul wrote when they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. And you put two to two together what we see from Psalm 83. And it's not hard to figure out that who's going to come into 
power and what they will do with the peace treaty. So in my February 1st, 2012 video, beginning at the 2.30 mark, I tell you the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel will break off. I didn't hold anything back at this point. Uh, and let me go right into that. I'll show you that. 2.30. Just take a second. Just move it right here. To uh, do away with Israel. And I've already shown in many, many places the Muslim Brotherhood are going to get rid of uh, the peace agreement that was established in 1979 between Israel and Egypt. And so... Alright, so there you have it. Uh, there's more to this video. You really need to listen to this video because I give you more warnings of what was going to happen. But I just wanted to show you way back in January, the beginning of the year, I was already telling you exactly what was going to happen. Now, August the 22nd, 2012. Get the headline here. Israel, Egypt breaking the peace treaty. It says this. Israel objected Tuesday to a move by Egypt's new leaders to deploy tanks in a vital border area calling the action a violation of the landmark 1979 peace accord between the two nations. The spat is the biggest test yet of the peace agreement, a cornerstone of regional stability since Egypt's Islamic president took power in June and plays into the Israeli fears that the treaty could be threatened down the road. That's exactly what I said was going to happen. They were already showing you uh, in many, many articles besides this that they were going to get rid of the peace agreement. Now moving tanks into the Sinai area is a violation of those agreements. So you can see the direction that it's going and it's the direction that the Lord showed us heading towards the Psalm 83 prophecy. And of course, here's the whole headline. Just click that when you go to there. But when you notice this article, it's talking about the Islamic leaders, which is Masai, who got elected in June of this year. Muslim Brotherhood got elected. Exactly what I said was going to happen. And when I said that they were going to install Sharia law, that's what they plan to do. I said this over a year ago. They're moving in that same direction. They fulfilled everything that I told you. The future is now. We've seen it happen. Now, in June 24th, 2012, it, you'll see this article. It says, Muslim Brotherhood's Mohammed Marsi wins Egypt's president's race. Okay? So that should squall or stop anyone from saying that, you know, who's the president of Egypt now? Because in June 24th, uh, that came to fruition, the thing that I told you about, again, based on what the Lord had showed us. So in August 4th of 2012, I set up my prophecy uh, post again, talking about the Psalm 83 war, and this is what I said then. Prophecy sign. Uh, it, it's actually the same. I'm not going to read it because I already read this to you, but it's talking about the the war about uh, Psalm 83 war, and this is what I posted here. All right, I put the sign up here. This is my doing. Uh, in many of my posts in the beginning of 2012, I warned you Egypt's new president would be a Muslim Brotherhood government and they would install Islamic law. I warned you this because of Psalm 83 shows that Egypt will be one of the nations who comes against Israel. And knowing this, I could see where the future was headed. Now I knew we could also say goodbye to the Israeli Egyptian peace agreement that was set uh, installed in 1979 sure enough what I warned you based on what I know from scripture Egypt not only has installed the Muslim Brotherhood president but the new Egyptian Constitution is becoming one of Islamic Sharia law and of course Sharia law calls for calls for the destruction of all Jews and we are moving quickly toward the Psalm 83 war, and this is where I ended that quote. Now, getting to today's news, and here we are today of October 
I'm sorry, uh, August the 24th, it says this, the headline, Analyst Brotherhood Takes Total Control of Egypt. Now, Isaiah 19 told us that Egypt was going to fight against themselves. That happened. They were going to be in conflict with their nation, their brothers fighting against brothers, the kingdom against the kingdom, which means civil unrest. That happened. And as far as the crew leader, guess what? Marcy fits the bill here. With with rise of Marcy, a new dictatorship may be replacing the old while world persists in looking for signs of pragmatism. It says, while the world persists in looking for signs of pragmatism in Egypt, in the, Egypt, the Egyptian president, Mohamed Marsi is quietly taking over all the power bases in the country. He is making the moves to become that evil, cruel ruler that we see in Scripture, in Isaiah chapter 19. Having gotten rid of the army old guard, he replaced them with his own men. Officers belonging to, I'll uh, go figure this one, the Muslim Brotherhood or known sympathizers. All right, so you go back to the early part of the of uh, 2012 or latter part of 2011 when the Muslim Brotherhood said, we're not even going to put up a candidate. Uh, we knew that that time that was a lie. And everything that they have said so far has turned out to be a lie. Because they're doing exactly what the Lord said that they were going to do from Isaiah chapter 19. Then he turned his attention to the media, and they're talking about Marcy here, and replacing 50 editors working for the government's extensive and influential press empire, including the Al Haram, the Al Abakar, the Al Gamora. And he is now busy appointing new governors to the 27 regions of the country. Now, Mubarak, keep in mind that Mubarak was the former president of uh, Egypt, and of course they moved him out, as you well know now. But Mubarak used, uh, used to choose retired generals, and he could depend on for these sensitive posts. Marcy is hand-picking party faithful. At the same time, upper echelons in the government ministries and economic and cultural organizations are methodically being replaced. In other words, they're replacing him with who? Guess what? The radical Muslim Brotherhood who hates Israel. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood is the fast assuming total control. And what else is new? All you have to do is read Isaiah chapter 19. For many observers, the deployment of the army units, now get this, important news here, army units in Sinai is more about proclaiming Egyptian sovereignty in the face of Israel than actually fighting Islamic terrorism. In other words, what the Muslim Brotherhood is doing is they're making gestures against the Israelis, and this shouldn't blow your mind because Jesus talked about kingdom against kingdom and wars and rumors of wars and of course one of those wars is the Psalm 83 war of which Egypt is going to play a major role in and this is why Egypt has uh, gone uh, astray and this is why Egypt has been given over to a cruel leader and this is why Egypt is moving those tanks into the Sinai breaking the treaty the peace treaty that was established in 1979 now, drafting the new constitution is their next objective. And remember now, I told you the Islamic law was coming over a year ago. And brothers and the sheriffs make up an absolute majority in the constitutional assembly. Liberal and the secular forces are boycotting its sessions and the Supreme Constitutional Court is examining a request to have it dissolved since it does not conform to the Constitution because of its over, overly Islamic uh, composition, a decision it is expected in, to, in September. Now the Assembly, however, is not waiting according to the various leaks. It is putting the final touch to the Constitution where laws have to conform. Get this, Sharia. 
and special committees will supervise the media and forbid any, get this, forbid any criticism of Islam and of the Prophet. All right? So what you have here, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm getting this message to you. Because if you know the word of the Lord, you can flat out tell the people what's going to happen in the future. The Lord told us that before he does anything, he's going to tell the prophets. Well, the prophets told us what was going to take place. It's already written down. I'm not the prophet. All I'm doing is showing you what the prophets had to say, making it easy for you to understand. Now, in the wings is the creation of a committee of Islamic sages supervising the law, making progress and uh, effect avoiding of substance in parliament elect elected by the people, though it is not clear yet if, when, and how it will work. What is clear is that the parliament made of flesh and blood individuals is against the very nature of the Sharia where all laws are based on the Quran and the Hittites. This is a far cry from the universal declaration of human rights. So, you know, they got rid of Mubarak and they got they installed somebody who's far worse. Now at least during Mubarak, Christians had a chance or anyone who did not worship uh, their God Allah. But under the cruel leader and under the Marcy government, they have already uh, went and installed, saying that they're going to install again crucifying people. Anyone who opposes him will be crucified. Anybody who is a Christian, they, they already are telling us what they're going to do. This is cruelty in its utterest form. Marcy has been careful to speak about uh, about creating a civil society. It is now obvious that what he meant was a society not ruled by the army and not a secular society. Indeed, he had promised to appoint a woman. And back then I said, no, this isn't going to happen. No way, because the Islamic consider a woman secondary. So when he appointed, when he promised he was going to appoint a woman, I knew that that was a lie. So appointed a woman to the cop as vice president, but chose Muhammad Meke, the, the Sunni known for his sympathy for, guess what, the Muslim Brotherhood. All right? And incidentally, or not, the brother of the new Minister of Justice, Professor Hasham Hamek, or Meki, known for his independent stands in opposition to Mubarak, but who had carefully concealed his support for the brothers. So here you go, people. Everything that I told you that was going to happen way back in 2011, it has already happened. Now, let me just show you this for a second. Take a look at Gander at Psalm 83 because the events that I just showed you are leading to this war. Now there were many people who didn't believe what I said over a year ago about what was going to happen with Egypt. And I'm praying to God that those people would have seen what I showed them today and the results of what I prophesied before only in the, in the manner of what the prophets had given to us. In other words, when I say prophesying, I'm directing you to the prophets. I'm not directing you to me, and I'm not saying that I'm a prophet. What I'm saying is that the prophets that God chose to write these things down have, have come to pass. And all I did was connect the dots for you, and it is in our face. And these prophecies that are being fulfilled now are definitely signs that Jesus Christ is coming back. And Sharia law is going to be established in Egypt. I warned about it. It's coming. Definitely coming. Now, with that, let me just give you that in these last days, the Lord told us that anybody uh, that was Christians 
they were going to be killed. And we know this because Matthew chapter 24, verse 9, get this what the Lord says, then shall they be delivered or deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated for all nations for my name's sake. Right? So right there, all the nations are going to be uh, affected by extremism and they're going to be going after the Christians because of Jesus Christ and because of his name and we're seeing the escalation of attacks against Christians against the churches and anybody who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now in Revelation chapter 6 9 it says this and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar of the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held now listen to this the Lord showed us that the rapture of the church was going to take place and when the rapture of the church took place then the people who were left behind would have to go through this tribulation period but the Lord showed us that there would be another opportunity for people to get saved during the tribulation period how do we know that well it's easy number one he sends 144,000 Jewish virgins that you'll see in the book of Revelation chapter 7 and also in chapter 14. These people, these Jews, these male virgins, they have no guile. They were going to be preaching, they will be preaching the word of the Lord during the tribulation period and for the people who did not receive the message, obviously, they're, and the people who received the message that refused it, they're going to know that they blew the big of their life but not receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior and they are going to understand what's going to happen to them during the tribulation period and there will be many many people who did not listen to the message of salvation now that when they get into the tribulation they are going to know that the only way that they can be saved is to reject the mark of the beast and this is why the angel in the book of Revelation we see that Jesus sends angels warning the people on the earth do not take that mark now if people couldn't get saved during the tribulation period why would the Lord be sending an angel around to the entire world warning the people to do not take that mark now, in the Old Testament, when they were when Jesus, who is actually God in the New, he is God in the New Testament because God left His kingdom, took on the form of a man until death, and so Jesus and the Lord are the same, and our Lord showed us that He was going to make a way for people during that tribulation period and the only way that they could get to heaven would be to die as a martyr and so we know that by the warning the Lord has given these people an opportunity now as I said in the Old Testament when they were dealing with the Jews there was a 490 years time allotted to deal with the Jews to finish all transgression and prophecy and to anoint the most holy which would be Jesus Christ and so all of these things had to come to pass the 490 years now God dealt with the Jews for 484 years he finished that when he that at least that time period when he was killed in Jerusalem in 32 AD the time clock dealing with the Jews stopped and so we only have seven years left now in the Old Testament they were saved or their sins were forgiven by the sacrifices their atoning of blood the, the, the killing of the lambs and so forth and so by their works by the strict instructions that God gave them they had uh, they had their faith, they had their sins forgiven by the actions, their works, they had to do these things. Now, in the church age, the Lord has freely given us an opportunity to accept him. It's a free gift, as it says in Ephesians. You can't earn this. It's free to you. 
But when the church is gone, when the church is raptured out of the way, we know again that God is going to begin dealing with the Jews as he did in the Old Testament, and it will be by their works, demonstration of their works. Now, what are the works? Well, obviously, if the grace is gone, and the only way that you can get to heaven is to be killed as a martyr, refusing to mark, as it says in uh, Revelation, the warning from Revelation chapter 13, that shows us that during the seven-year period of time, the works of salvation are going to be refusing the mark of the beast, and this is why Jesus sends the angels to the earth to warn the people don't take it. Now, if there was no chance at all, please listen to this, if there was no chance at all for the people who were left behind to receive and to be able to obtain salvation and get to heaven, then Jesus wouldn't have dispatched or would not in the future dispatch any angels to warn the people because there wouldn't be any hope and there wouldn't be any way for them to come into heaven. But the Lord showed us, and we see in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, those people who reject reject the, the mark of the beast and reject his kingdom and refuse to bow down, they will be killed, they will be martyred, and it is by their deed, their work, that they are able to get into heaven. So, there you have it. We have, in these last days, persecution coming, but it will be horrendous during the tribulation period when the Antichrist goes after not only the Christians, but he's going to turn on every single person on this planet, and that includes the Muslims, because we know from the book of Daniel that, that when this Antichrist comes, the Satan is going to incarnate this man, so you're going to have Satan on this planet. And he is going to go after everyone, not just the Christians, but everyone, the Muslims, the Buddhists, everybody on this planet who has been left behind, he goes after them to try to destroy them. So in the meantime, we see this persecution starting, and it's generating a lot of attention lately because there's a lot of attacks going on with Christians. Now yesterday I put up a little bit of information how there was a young girl who was mentally challenged that they, the Muslims jailed uh, for blasphemy. And this, this is really, you know, sickening news. But today there's another case. A Christian boy was tortured and killed in Pakistan. There's the subtitle. The tortured body of 11-year-old Christian boy has been found in the town of Punjab, Pakistan, days after a young Christian girl was arrested on blasphemy charges. People, no one, please understand this. We're in the last days. The game's over. The game is over. Jesus is showing us the events that are taking place leading up to the final events that are going to cause him to come back and take over this planet to rule in Jerusalem. But the game is over. If you think that this is a game, you, got, you have to be kidding. And I'm praying that all of this information will open your eyes to let you that as long as the church is still here in the age of grace where you can freely accept Jesus Christ, you had better listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you and today give your life over to Christ. Now, why did Christ give you all this information? Why did he pointed people like me to show you all this information, tying the links together between Bible prophecy and current events? It's because most of the world doesn't read the Bible. Most of the read doesn't study the Word of God. Most of the Word doesn't even, world doesn't even care about Jesus. And we see this, and you'll see this in the documentation in my book. But the people who claim to be Christians are falling away from the faith. There was just two new reports that came out that you can Google this and see them for yourselves. 
people are falling away. Another prophecy that Paul talked about for the last days. We're in spiritual warfare. And they're coming. Satan is coming after the Christians. And he's using, obviously, these radical Muslim to do it. It's going to get worse. Think it's not. Listen to what the Lord said in Mark 13, 8, when he talked about the birth pangs. They're already on us, and they will get worse. Now, the good news is this. Christ warned us about these things prior to their existence. And when we see all these things, the Lord told us in Matthew chapter 24, look up because your redemption draws nigh. And so even though we're seeing all this horrific news, we know that the blessings are coming because Jesus is coming for his church soon. And you need to be ready and the only way that you're going to be ready is to accept Christ as your Savior and have your name placed in the book of life whatever you're waiting for it's not worth it give it give it over to the Lord today accept Christ thank you